This week on the RV Podcast. The best way to get the perfect campsite. How to see it before you book it, no matter where you happen to be. A dozen RVers from the RV lifestyle community share their favorite campsites. They reveal some hidden gems we bet you'll want to try. Thieves impersonating a Florida business scammed $80,000 out of people who thought they were buying motorhomes. But the RVs never existed. All this plus the RV news of the week, the social media RV buzz, and your questions coming up on episode 487 of the RV podcast. Hello, everybody. I'm Mike Wedlin, and this is my lifelong traveling companion and my bride, Jennifer. And welcome to another edition of the RV Podcast. This one coming to you from Loblolly Ridge. That's the name we gave to our base camp, our little RV property that we uh, love to camp at in uh, Middle Tennessee. Nice to be here. It is very nice to be here. Spring is in the air. Oh, it sure is. I saw some daffodils today. And pollen is making you sneeze. Oh, yeah, pollen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and when we, I turned on the windshield wipers uh, just to clear some stuff off. And did you see all the yellow pollen? In it? Yep, it's it? that time of year. So yeah. if I'm itching and scratching, you'll know why. Hey, we should remind you that we have this podcast in several different flavors. There is a video version of the exact same podcast you're listening to right now. And you can find that on our RV Lifestyle YouTube channel. It's also embedded on our RV Lifestyle travel blog. And of course, the audio version of the podcast is available on all of your favorite podcast apps. We are uh, in the midst of a series of tests that we're doing. On, uh, are you ready for this? If you're a regular follower, you'll shake your head. We are going to be revisiting Class B camper vans. Now, if you are a regular, you know we used to have a whole bunch of Class B camper vans. And we have a soft spot in our heart for Class B camper vans. And uh, someone challenged us to uh, see what's new. That uh, someone was Nick Schmidt from SunshineStateRVs.com. We met Nick at the Tampa RV show and he says, you know, you guys, uh, Class B vans have changed with this van life movement so much since you were involved. And we got out of it about 2019, moved up to B pluses and C's and fifth wheels. He says, you got to come back and try them. And so we are going to try uh, five of them and uh, we're going to do full scale reviews. We're doing the first one uh, right now. We're in a um, 2023 Coachman Nova. And uh, it's been interesting, uh, back, in, back in a B. <laughs> yes, and 20 feet, 6 inches. Yeah, it's a nice little unit. It's very responsive. This is on the Dodge uh, Ram uh, Promaster chassis, and we have never been on that chassis before. That was just coming in about the time uh, that we got out. It was just starting to be pretty popular, and now, of course, it's a standard out there along with uh, the Mercedes uh a Sprinter chassis and uh, the Ford Transit chassis. So we're trying that out this week. We've got four more and we're going to be just test camping along uh, throughout Florida and the Gulf Coast for the next uh, several weeks. And then eventually we'll do uh, five full reviews on all these Class Bs. And we should tell everybody that we're not accepting requests. This isn't a radio show. And uh, how do we gently say that, that uh, we went into this with with uh, okay. What what's the what would we want if we were getting a class B again? What would we want? And there were a couple things. Yeah, I, I would like twin beds. I do not want a sofa bed. I had a sofa bed. Don't want any part of a sofa bed. I want twin beds. And we really don't like the Murphy bed. We had a, had two of them actually, and we just got tired of you know at the end of a long day um, having to set up the Murphy bed. And then in the morning, you got to set it back up, you know, put it back in the in, all up again. And it's just a pain. And it was so nice when we had a um, transit based uh, B plus, uh, the Wonder. We actually um, liked those uh, rear twin beds because they were all made up. You just climb into the back. Now, I'm not saying we're getting a class B. We are. In fact, we're coming to you tonight from our fifth wheel, our Montana fifth wheel, also known as 
our condo on wheels. <laughs> and we love that. And uh, that's here at our base camp in Tennessee. Uh, but we, you know, we can see that uh, we want twin beds. We also want something that's very maneuverable If that we're interested in. If we were interested in a Class B, we'd want one that could easily be parked in a parking spot um, and that, you know, would be um, a good for a, a daily driver if we wanted to replace uh, and have a second vehicle and use that. So that's uh, that's those are the two big things. Oh, well, oh, wait, one other. <laughs> well, a big thing to me is on a Class B when you have on your side view mirrors, when you are notified when somebody's in your blind spot. I absolutely love that feature. Yeah. I wish every car had that. Uh, well, most cars do now, now. have it. Um, most RVs don't that are uh, that are Cs or B pluses because they're too wide mm -hmm. for those lights to really work. But uh, these this Class A that or this Class B that we're checking out now for uh, the Nova from Coachman does have it, and uh, you really did like it. The other thing I don't want now you may like them, I don't, and I'm doing stuff that we're testing RVs that we kind of like. I don't like cassette toilets, and so uh, that's another um, no cassette toilet. <laughs> you I, don't care. I don't care because I don't empty. Yeah. So, uh, well, this is yours. I do it, and I don't like cassettes, so I don't like empty in period. But <laughs> nevertheless, sometimes you have to. I think it goes back to the old pop up camper, the old days, and we had our little pop up. So don't get talking now. This doesn't mean that we're getting a class B. We're just going to review five of the ones that we like, and we'll give you a, an idea of some of the things that are out there now. And uh, it'll be fun. We'll release all five videos, five one a day for five days in a row, and that will be coming up after we've tested them all and get back and edit the video. So when somewhere. You know how many Class Bs there are out there? Well, you know, that's the bright spot in the industry and this downturn that the industry is going through right now. A lot of people are using uh, Class Bs. The van life movement did drop a little, but not nearly as much. So a lot of people are. The other thing that has surprised us coming back is how expensive they are. Oh, it seems like a Class B. Plan on a new one, 200000 Yeah, a fully equipped new one, um, you know, well-equipped is about 200000 bucks. You know, so it might be a little bit less, might be a little bit more. They're very expensive. And we're very spoiled because we like our lithium and we like our solar. Yeah. Uh, you can get it cheaper. How much is it to have the average package of lithium? 10 to 20 grand, depending on how much. Yeah, so that's a lot in. of money. Yeah, it is. All right, enough of that. Again, we're just testing them, and maybe we've, we've got other other vehicles, other RVs that we've never camped in, including your favorite Airstreams. Mm -hmm. We've never uh, driven or camped in a Class A, and we may want to try some of those. We've never been in a truck camper. So uh, that's kind of one of our focuses this year, to try as many different RVs as we can. We love our fifth wheel, so don't start rumors. <laughs> we're just testing. That's like going to look for a new puppy with us. Oh, yeah. RV. You, know, you can't just go look at a new puppy. You got to bring <laughs> Never it go look at a puppy. So I'm not promising anything, but we are looking, and our friend Nick Schmidt is going to help us uh, see kind of a good overview of what's out there in Class Bs these days. All right, when we come back, lots of stuff happening on the social media buzz about RV and the RV lifestyle. Wendy Boyer will join us when we return. There is a new development coming on the market for RVers in Tennessee. It's built by the same company we bought our land from. We just went to look at it and it is amazing. Mountaintop property, great views, big woods and trails close to the Buffalo River, like our property. Gorgeous countryside. It's only a few minutes from the Natchez Trace Parkway and an easy drive to Nashville. These are big properties, five acres and up, and the prices are great. There's even financing. We are really happy with our property. These guys do a great job. It's hard to find acreage where you can have an RV full time, especially in popular destination spots. This is your property, your way. There's electric and high speed fiber optic internet. No more crowded parks or reservations. You can stay as long as you want. Go to RVLands.net. That's RVLands.net. Okay, now it's time to hear from Wendy. Wendy, what is everybody talking about in our social media outlets? Hi, everybody. Over in our RV lifestyle community in the boondocking space, we asked, what's the most memorable boondocking spot you've discovered and why? 
While Ari and Jesse, they shared their favorite spot is BLM land outside Goblin Valley State Park in Utah. They said the Milky Way spread at night from horizon to horizon, and it was just amazing. They even shared this beautiful photo. Beth said there are just too many good boondocking spots, but the first that came to her mind was the location she found in Wrangell St. Elias National Park and Preserve in Alaska, where she pulled off next to a small lake. She said she woke up in the morning to a mom and baby moose just outside her window that she spent hours watching. And I had to chuckle and could relate to what Ron shared. He said his favorite spots are in national forests near little no-name lakes located along no-name roads. But truly, there were so many good locations shared in this post. You need to check it out yourself. Also in our community, in the mods and DIY space, folks were sharing pictures of some improvements that they had made on their rigs. And I don't know about you, but I just love these sorts of personal posts. Walt, he shared a picture of this gorgeous walnut cover he made to go over his stove to create more counter space. It was truly stunning. And Wendy, she shared vinyl tiles that they put up on their metal backsplash in their kitchen. She said she did it to make it look homier, and I thought it was super attractive. And then Lynette, she shared she had two pages of modifications, which is just great. Meanwhile, over in our RV Lifestyle Facebook group, Lee, he said he was a newbie, and he asked, do you leave things out at your campsite when you take off for the day with your toad? And he was talking about things like chairs and grills. Well, Mia said they lock up their bikes, but they don't worry about those other things. And several people who had e-bikes, they said, you know, you need to always lock up your e-bikes. And many got into geographic specific answers. Charles, he said they camp mostly in South Tennessee, Georgia, Alabama, Louisiana, and Florida, and they never put anything away and never have had anything stolen. And the majority of the folks, you know, they said the same thing, regardless of whether they were in Northern California or Pennsylvania or any place in between. But still, many of the nearly 300 responses said they do lock things up. And the bottom line seemed to be where you camp can make a difference. If you're in a safe place, not a safe place. And many believe that while rare, thefts were slightly more common at places where non-campers could go, like maybe a state park. So hopefully Lee found the answers that he was looking for, and it was certainly interesting to read. And that's it for me this week. I'm Wendy Boyer, and I'll see you over at the RV Lifestyle community or Facebook group. I'm amazed at how helpful this new RV Lifestyle community that we have started, uh, how helpful that has been to so many people. It's growing really fast. Uh, Wendy had a lot of the comments from there. In a minute, you're going to meet uh, a dozen or so uh, RVers who are sharing their favorite campgrounds with us. And we really got uh, a hold of them through the um, community.rvlifestyle.com. Uh, we'd put a post up asking just people to share their favorite campgrounds. And we were amazed at the responses we get. So we got a dozen of them to share that on video and audio with you. And they'll be uh, joining us in a couple of minutes. But if you're not a member of that, please uh, consider joining. It's absolutely free. And uh, you'll find 20 different uh, RV lifestyle discussion spaces. Uh, every different aspect of the lifestyle is, is uh, there for you. Just go to community.rvlifestyle.com. And I guarantee if you join, you will learn something. Yep. That's, uh, that's what and it's all about. And make some new friends. And you will make some new friends. It's all about relationships. Mm -hmm. I like to say it's the next best thing to a campfire. <laughs> when we return, the interview of the week, coming up. The one thing that can ruin a perfect RV trip is a bad mattress. And believe us, we know. Over the years, we've tried many and we have found them all wanting until now. Now, we sleep on the RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding. Quite simply, it's the best we've ever slept on. We chose a queen-size Aurora Lux medium firm mattress that arrived tightly rolled in a box. All we did was put it on the bed, unroll it, and wait for it to recover from the compression. Then we put on the sheets and the bed covers and found we slept so well that we ordered another one for our home. That's how comfortable it is. Our sleep is now so luxurious and deep that we can't imagine using a different mattress. Shipping is free. If you're disappointed with the current mattress in your RV, you owe it to yourselves to try the RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding. Brooklyn Bedding sends out all of their RV mattresses from their own factory in Arizona. 
This means they're able to use premium materials at a reasonable price for you with no middleman bringing up the cost. Don't miss out on the best sleep of your life. Visit rvmattress.com slash rvlifestyle and hurry because once November's over, so are these incredible deals. Right now I want to talk about uh, being connected on the road and there's no better place to go than Mobile Must Have. Mobile Must Have is the sponsor of this part of the podcast and it is a service that is started by RVers for RVers and it's dedicated to providing the most needed mobile lifestyle solutions. And this month, Mobile Must Have is offering 30 days of free data with the purchase of a new PepLink router. Now, Mobile Must Have has PepLink routers and internet solutions for every type of RVers, from weekend and holiday vacationers to full-time road warriors and remote workers. And PepLink is the gold standard for mobile internet, and Mobile Must Have has a modem and a data plan that will fit literally every RV budget out there. They offer their Fusion SIM which can provide coverage to every major U.S. carrier. Mobile Must Have also has RV cellular antennas and wiring and cable solutions for Starlink satellite internet. Just go to rvlifestyle.com slash mobile must have. That's rvlifestyle.com slash mobile must have and schedule a free call and free consultation to see the many different internet packages that are available and the one that is just right for you. That's rvlifestyle.com slash mobile must have. Welcome back and now it's time for the interview of the week. And we're going to try something a little different this uh, this week with the interview of the week. We're going to give you a two-part interview. The first part is something that a lot of you are interested in right now as you are making your travel plans for the 2024 season. It's starting very soon. Many of you are scouring the internet looking for information on different campgrounds. Uh, well, we we're going to be joined by a good friend of ours. We've known him now for close to 10 years, uh, Mark Kep. He is the creator and the founder of CampgroundViews.com. And what makes uh, Mark's platform different is you can actually see the actual park that you're looking at. You can take, in many of them, a virtual tour, a 360-degree virtual tour to see what that spot looks like, what's nearby what the condition of the campground is. Uh, Mark's, I think, slogan is, uh, see it before you book it. Uh, it is a great resource. We asked Mark to come on the podcast and share with us how to use campgroundviews.com to find the perfect campsite. Mark is an old friend, and Mark, uh, it is great to uh, introduce you to our followers again and for all of our new followers to tell them about campgroundviews.com. Uh, first of all, how have you been doing? I know you're. this is busy show season for you, right? Yeah, I'm actually on the road. First off, good to see you, Mike. And I'm usually on the other side with everybody else watching the show. I'm a huge fan and follow all your podcasts and really appreciate what you do for the industry. Um, yeah, I'm on the road right now man, in our Class C. Um, our business, we help a lot of campground and RV park owners. I mean, we all camp there, right? And we know that some parks could use a little bit of help. And so we, we do our effort to try to help them run their parks better. And I'm currently at a trade show in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I'll be heading down to Orlando, back up to Ohio, Wisconsin, all over the place. And, you know, why fly when you have an RV? So we're out on the road, currently in the RV and traveling all over. Well, let's tell our audience just why campground views, particularly this time of year, is so handy. This is the time that everybody is starting to plan, or they should be, if, if they want to have uh, the perfect getaway in their RV, the time to plan for their spring and, and, uh, and summer. How can campgroundviews.com help them out? Well, I think we can start with the simple question for everybody. How easy is it for you to find campgrounds? You know, it, it's it's a pain in the butt. It's, it's And it's a universal problem. It's existed. My wife and I were full-time RVers for 12 years. It's why we built this business, because it's a pain in the butt. And our solution, if you haven't seen it, is to use kind of like Google Street View, allow you to go into the campground and drive right down the roads. You hit play and you start cruising through the roads. And so we now have 2,300. And, and for some of your longtime listeners, they'll know, Mike, when you and I first did this this video, I think we had 200, 300 videos. Yeah. We're yeah. at 2,300 
campgrounds and RV parks all across the United States and even into Canada that you can virtually tour now. And so when I'm looking, you know, if, if I'm in the spring season and I'm doing it right now, I'm on the road right now traveling. Finding campgrounds can be very difficult if you're trying to go on the busy seasons, the busy times, right? Like Fourth of July, Labor Day, Memorial Day, all those type of times. So what I encourage you to do is identify a destination that you're wanting to go in general, and then don't be fixated on a specific spot. Open up your parameters, right? So don't say I need to be at this campground on this day. Say I need to be in this area at this time period. Open up your search radius and you might find some pretty special places that aren't exactly at the center of your destination, maybe a few miles out, but you end up in a better spot having a very unique experience with your stay. Now, once you do that, when we obviously the name of your site is campgroundviews.com. What is what do they see when they go into their site? And we'll we'll put for those of you who are watching the YouTube version of the podcast, we'll cover some of what Mark is going to talk about and demonstrate it to you in our in a video version of it. But uh, since this is a podcast and audio was always the primary goal, what are they going to see when they go to a, a camp one of your campgrounds? It's a, so when you when you get to a campground that has a virtual tour, remember we have we have sixteen thousand campgrounds listed at Campground Views. Twenty three hundred of those now have the virtual tours. Mm-hmm. A lot of them are state parks, federal parks, and so forth. So a lot of the public agency parks. Mm-hmm. When you get there, it's the same thing as if you would arrive at the park to drive through it. You hit play on a video and you start driving right from the entryway into that campground area. You travel through the campground area and it's in a three sixty video. So if you think about Google Street View. Or that type of experience, you can actually click and, and drag the screen and look around. So you're driving the roads with the ability to look around. And then what makes the technology really special is over the campsites, you'll see little markers pop up. If you click those markers, the view will actually stop looking at that site and the site number will pop up. It'll tell you this is site 10 and it's got electric and water and it's 30 feet long. And it'll start giving you details about that site that you're actually looking at. So then you can look around and say, yeah, I can easily back in or pull through that site or I can't. If you can't, hit play and continue on until you find the one that will fit your rig. At the bottom of that little window that pops up on the site that you like, you'll see a little visit button. If you click that, it drops you into the reservation engine, whatever that may be to book that exact site. So now all of a sudden you're able to see, identify the site that you like, and then click and potentially book it if it's available. Now, the ability to see it before you book it is uh, hard to explain in concept, but once people try it, it is just amazing at, at how much that detail is. I mean, this isn't, sometimes many of the state parks, you know, have, a shot of the of the site, but they don't see it in perspective. You can't look to the left. You can't look to the right. You can actually move around the screen and see uh, what's in front of it, what's behind it, what's alongside of it. Uh, how do you do all of that? How do you get that? You actually must go there and videotape that stuff. Not me physically, but we have team members that go out there that are usually RVers or campers that are really gung-ho about it. We work with them during the camping season to go capture properties um, that are public parks. In addition to that, we have them go out to private parks that are working with us to capture those locations too. Because in the end, it, this is a content play, really. If And you'll have viewers that will go to our website and they'll be like, how come you don't have X, Y, and Z campground? Well, there's a whole bunch of reasons, but simply because we haven't had somebody film it yet, you know, in a nutshell. So campers can work with us if they're interested in potentially capturing those properties and helping out. Um, but if it's a private park, the best thing, and I'll ask your, your viewers this, if you know somebody in a private park, tell them you want this tour for that property. These owners, the reason I'm at these shows is they actually don't believe that we campers actually want to see the campground. <laughs> they're afraid that if you see the campground, you won't want to stay there or you'll have all sorts of weird questions. I know that that's factually untrue. I'm a camper. I want to see your park before I get there. I need your help, folks. Call them up. Call up KOA Corporate. Tell them you want this for their parks. They will listen to you. Right now, they ain't listening to me. I think one of the reasons that many of the campgrounds uh, are reluctant to to do something like that is because the condition of those campgrounds is pretty bad. And many of these sites are on level. And it's pretty hard to cover up a bunch of warts on a campground site uh, with with a detailed video. Which tells me then that the parks that you have are people who say, "Yeah, come and look at it. We are we are very happy to show you this site." And we I think right so along, yeah. that's that's better than a review that they're willing to show right there before you even buy it. 
I completely agree with you. In fact, during this journey, we were only staying at parks that have a virtual tour of it for that very reason, to obviously support the parks that support this idea and this concept and are willing to share um, their park openly. I mean, in the end, you're going to stay there anyways or not, right? So if you're going to stay there, why not show you in advance so you know what you're getting into? That way I know how big my site is, what I can bring along. Can I put the carpet out? You know, all that, all that stuff that we all have to deal with as campers and RVers, we want to know. Period. Like we want to know that that information and whether they tell us it up front or we find out after the fact, make it easy on us. We'll find out anyways, whether it's through online reviews or showing up in, in person. This yeah. is this is more if we actually look at it and, and you and I have talked offline. Like the reason I'm doing this is is, you know, personal, right? I want to be able to have good places to camp. I want to help others find great places to camp. But I also want to invite people who haven't necessarily RV'd or camped to feel more comfortable to potentially do it. I mean, the the unknown scares people away. And you and I both know that that unknown was actually the big problem we had during COVID because a whole bunch of people who had never camped went out there with no information and basically, you know, escaped. But in the result, they, they damaged a lot of our boondocking spots, uh, oh, you know, broke a lot of the rules. And it was just because they didn't have the information they needed to make really good decisions in regard to their camping. Yeah, the the whole idea of seeing it though is is so important. Uh, I go back is that I think that the camping industry is just my impression, and but my impression is the camping industry is going through a real trans transitory stage right now. Um, the old stuff that people used to get away with, you know, really bad amenities, uh, uh, spotty electric hookups. Uh, dirty washrooms there are still a lot of campgrounds like that out there but um what i really like about your site and why we recommend it uh it's ten dollar membership we should tell everybody a month um is that you can get rid of all that uncertainty by going to campgroundviews.com and actually looking at the site and uh, i know that uh, they can see a lot by just going there but uh uh, give them a, a little bit of information. It is a, a, a membership site. Talk about that, Mark. How much? I, I mentioned ten bucks, but uh, I think it's nine ninety five or something, isn't it? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it, Campground View starts out at the surface. We're a search engine, so we actually hand built the database that you search through at Campground Views, and we have over sixteen thousand campgrounds and RV parks all over the United States. So we'll start at that. That's completely free to use, and there's an app for your iPhone and Android, or you can just use the web browser and search campground views and go and find all that information completely free. There's thousands of photos, thousands of YouTube videos. Then we have these virtual tours. Some of them are free. Those parks that are inviting you to come in, those private parks, those tours are completely free to use. The ones that we've captured, like the state parks and the federal parks that we've captured, those require um, the membership in order to access those uh, tours. And um, that membership fee is... Nine ninety nine for a month, and it's a uh, hundred bucks for a year. And that, honestly, it's, it's the best ten bucks a month somebody could spend if they're in camping. And I, I think that the other thing to stress is that there is so much that they can see there for free, and they can see real quickly how handy that is. Well, campgroundviews.com is the website. Mark Kep is the CEO, the founder of it, and um, a real evangelist for good, clean, healthy camping. And uh, Mark, I uh, I look to the day when every campground is going to be on campgroundviews.com, but so many are on it now that uh, it's it's pretty simple to find a spot. Last question. Uh, I think when we had you on the program a couple of years ago, uh, you, you said that even on full weekends, if people will just broaden out their search a little, there's almost always a good camp sound. It's just that they got to be smart on how they search. Walk people through that. They might be trying to find still those great spots for the vacation uh, weekends, the big holiday weekends in 24. Uh, give them some assurances of that, that they can find a spot. Yeah, it, it, this is the hardest pill for folks to swallow when I give them this advice. So people may agree, disagree with me on this. If you're willing to wait, especially in a popular spot, something will open up. Example, we're leaving from here, Myrtle Beach, and heading down to Orlando next. In Orlando, we're actually staying at Fort Wilderness. And Fort Wilderness is completely sold out. They've been completely sold out for weeks. Guess what for we years. booked last night? Guess what we booked last night? A site at Fort Wilderness on the day we want to arrive for the entire time. Why? 
because people cancel the last minute. So it's just a matter of being diligent. And in that case, we absolutely had to be there because there's a trade show there. If I didn't have to be there, there was actually a ton of sites all around Orlando area that I could have gotten last minute. So it's about opening up your parameters, right? Not being fixated on one location, having a tool that allows you to find those sites, and then just taking the time to reach out to them. My, my trick is, instead of trying the online booking, this works well for private parks, not so much for state parks. But for private parks, if you call the office the day of, and Mike, you know this, we used to travel on a 44-foot fifth wheel, triple axle. We only fit in the big sites. I never made reservations in advance. We always booked the morning of because I never knew when we were actually going to leave. And I would call them the morning of and just say, hey, I got a 44-foot rig. I'm heading your way. Do you got a site available? First one would say no. Second one would say maybe. Third one would say, sure, we got a site. Pull on in. And then you're the hero because you just picked up their cancellation and they get to make money from you this weekend instead of the person that canceled. So it takes a little bit of gaming it and it's a little bit of effort. We're actually trying to help you on Camp Grab View. So we've got some cool stuff coming your way with that. But that's my advice there. Oh, great advice from Mark Kep and CampgroundViews.com. Thanks, Mark, for being on the show. Great to see you, Mike. Thanks, Mark. And now for the second part of our interview this week. And this is going to be uh, an introduction to a dozen uh, members of our community, .rvlifestyle.com. Uh, we posted a few weeks ago, as everybody was talking about the new season, where your favorite campground is. And folks, they responded like crazy with great ideas. Many of them campgrounds that we haven't heard of. And so um, we took together uh, about a dozen of the ones that we thought we wanted to share that we could fit in the time remaining in the podcast for the interview segment. And we're going to introduce you to 12 of our members and their favorite campgrounds. So listen up and take some notes. Great day, RV Lifestyle family. My name is Julio, and our favorite campground to visit is Archery Resorts in Fredericksburg, Texas. Now, if you're familiar with the area, Fredericksburg is also known as the wine country or the Napa Valley of Texas except our charcuterie boards normally include some smoked brisket or some pulled pork. Now, the RV park itself has full hookups, accommodates RVs of any size, and even has a turf pad right outside, or grass kind of turf pad right outside your RV, so you don't have to bring that carpet out if you don't want to. The RV resort also includes a winery, distillery, and a brewery, so you could try local beers, bourbon whiskey, and of course, wine. It has multiple restaurants and bars, and an outdoor concert hall for some live Texas music. About a three minute drive to downtown Fredericksburg and about a 15 to 20 minute drive to Enchanted Rock, which has some of the best stargazing and some amazing hiking trails. Again, that's Archray Resorts in Fredericksburg, located in the United States of Texas. Hi, I'm Suzanne, and one of my favorite uh, campgrounds is Fort Robinson State Park in northwestern Nebraska. It was developed as an Army outpost. Yeah during the Indian Wars of the 1800s. It was the agency headquarters for the Red Cloud Indian Reservation and where the Indian Chief Red Cloud was killed. It also was a cavalry remount station, an Army canine training facility. And, and then it became a uh, beef research center for a few years before it became a state park. There is horseback trail riding, Jeep trails, Jeep rides, stagecoach rides around the, the grounds. There are three campgrounds available. You can also bring your own horse if you would like. Um, and there's also outbuildings that you can rent and stay in. Hi, I'm Mark from Northern California. Our favorite RV park in Oregon is Ben's Sisters Garden RV Park on US Highway 20. As you arrive at the entrance to the park, you are greeted with a well-stocked store and friendly park staff. You will be guided to your site, reducing the stress to finding it on your own. The RV sites are level, paved, and spaced well apart from each other to give you a sense of privacy. The restrooms and showers are immaculate and inviting. The park has a large fishing pond with many Pond View RV sites, lush green manicured lawns, and flower gardens throughout the park. The cabins have a pond view with walking paths, and there is a heated swimming pool, hot tub, and miniature golf, and a dog park. The only problem that we had with staying there is we didn't stay long enough. Our next trip to Oregon, we will stay longer. Hi, my name is Richard, and my family's favorite campground would be Normandy Farms in Foxborough, Massachusetts. 
It is really a great place to camp. It's resort camping. They have four pools there, two are heated, one is indoors. They have activities for adults and for kids all day long that you can participate in if you'd like. And the staff is excellent. The bathrooms are very clean. The campground is very, very well kept. It is just a, a great place to go camping. Very close to Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Plymouth, Mass, Boston, and Providence. Hi, my name is Melissa Lyle, and I am from Midland, Michigan. My favorite place to camp so far has been in the UP in a town called Grand Marais. The campground is Woodland Park Campground, and it is right on Lake Superior. Going down to the beach and searching for Uperlite rocks, that was a lot of fun. Uperlite rocks glow in the dark when you shine a black light on them, and there's a lot of people that go to the beach at night to, to do that. Also about a 10 minute drive to Sable Falls and also something called the Log Slide, which is a steep hill that goes down to Lake Superior. It's very similar to um, if you go up to the Sleeping Bear Dunes in Glen Arbor. There's that steep hill that goes down to the lake. And about a 40 minute drive from Pictured Rocks. And we did a boat tour of Pictured Rocks and it's absolutely breathtaking. So that's somewhere I would highly recommend. Hi, this is Brad and my wife Shaoling and I have a favorite campground. That would be Silver Falls State Park located in Oregon. The roads leading into the park were very easy to travel, but it's the secluded private sites that we really enjoyed. But the hiking trails, oh my, the hiking trails. We felt the hiking trails were very moderate level and the loops were very nice. A lot of shade, very wide paths, found them very attractive but 10 waterfalls that you will encounter on these loops was what we really liked. There are four waterfalls that you actually walk behind. Yes, you will walk behind these waterfalls and see some spectacular sights. Something else that we really liked about this campground, all of the hiking trails can be accessed right from the campground. Happy trails. Hi. We, uh, we just want to introduce ourselves. My name is Donna. I'm Dallas, and we've been full-timing for a little over four years now. But we call Michigan our home. We were asked to talk about New Mexico State Parks, and the one that stands out to us is... Oliver Lee Memorial State Park near Alamogordo, New Mexico. It has spectacular views, uh, hiking. Uh, we've been to the White Sands National Park, which is... a uh, close day by day trip and where was the other place we went? Uh, Cloudcroft. Cloudcroft, New Mexico. Drove up to Cloudcroft, New Mexico. Uh, we did this in January and so it's uh, the snows were too heavy to do any hiking up there but the, the road, the view was beautiful. The, the drive view, was gorgeous. Yeah, the drive was beautiful. The town is a nice little place to, to go to. Uh, but Oliver Lee does stand out to us for New Mexico State Parks. Um, we've been there a couple of times now and we will be back. Anything else you want to say? Okay, thank you for having us. Hi, we're Stephen D.D. Miller from Mesa, Arizona, and we would like to share with you two of our favorite campgrounds here in the Southwest. First is Anza Borrego Desert State Park, just east of San Diego in Borrego Springs, California. It's a geological wonderland with active fault lines residual mud from some ancient flowing rivers, making for some amazing slot canyons to see either by hiking or jeeping. My favorite campground is Fool Hollow Campground in Shiloh, Arizona at an elevation of about 6,000 feet. It's a perfect place to escape the heat in the summertime, do some biking, hiking, or kayaking. Both of these state parks are well-maintained and never disappoint. Enjoy, Enjoy the, the journey. journey. Hello, RV Lifestyle Community. This is Randall Dexter. Our favorite campground is Jellystone Camp Golden Valley in Bostick, North Carolina. Nestled in the foothills of North Carolina, they have treetop cabins. They have regular cabins, great views, lots of nature, large pools, water park. Um, they have a large lake with activities, a wibbit, uh, bouncy pads, uh, pet friendly. Uh, large paved sites with paved roads, 
uh, lots of birthday celebrations, uh, golf cart parades, uh, putt-putt and alpine coaster, uh, lots of celebrations. So this is our favorite resort. Thank you for watching. Hi, I'm Mary, and my favorite campground is called Elkmont. It's inside the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, and it's about a 10-minute drive west of Gatlinburg, Tennessee. About nine years ago, there was a lady camping beside my sister, my cousin, myself, and my aunt, and she was so low, and we struck up a conversation, and she was 87 years old. She'd been coming since 1957 with her family, and until the age of 90, she was towing alone from Southern Florida. A remarkable person. We've kept in contact. I've camped with her several times over the last few years, and I'll be going back again this year for a couple of weeks when she comes up. She's amazing. She's now 96. There's nothing she can't do, and you should see her yank that generator to life. She's remarkable, and that's why it's my favorite campground. Hi, my name is Wendy, and my favorite campground of the moment, or last few years, has been Platte River Campground in Sleepy Bears National Lakeshore. So it's in a national park, it's beautiful, there's sand dunes and beautiful Lake Michigan, wild beach access, um, lots of trees, lots of trails, the campground sites are spacious. There's this awesome trail where you can walk straight to the beach and it's dog friendly, it's got clean up after them and there's no one there. It's just wild beach and it's gorgeous. And it also checks the box of being close to cute little towns which are teenage, college age daughters like. So when they wanna leave the campground, we can go visit Empire, Glen Arbor, Frankfurt, where there's awesome beaches, little cafes, good shopping, and so, um, and again, in a beautiful area. So Platte River Campground is my favorite. Hi, my name is Tracy, and my husband and I love to camp at state parks. We love the laid back, no frills atmosphere found at most state parks. My favorite state park by far is Pikes Peak State Park, found in far northeastern Iowa. It sits right on the Mississippi River across from Prairie du Chien, Wisconsin. The views and the scenic overlook at the campground are absolutely breathtaking. And while there are pull through sites available, I love the back end sites that are nestled right up against the woods. The sites are nice and roomy and the bathhouse is always clean. The campground itself is in a wooded setting, so there are lots and lots of trails to explore. And if that wasn't enough, it is super affordable as state parks tend to be. Electric sites are only $12 a night. Yep, you heard me, $12 a night. There are also a few full hookup sites available for just $24 a night. Iowa doesn't charge an entrance fee for any of its amazing state parks, so that makes the deal even more amazing. Now again, those campgrounds just shared uh, came from members of our community.rvlifestyle.com and uh, we invite you to come and join that group if you get a chance. And you're going to learn new things. You're going to make new friends. I guarantee it'll be worth your doing. All right. When we come back, the RV news of the week. So stay with us. This is the time of year when a lot of people start shopping for their next RV, checking out all of the 2024s online, going to shows. Keystone RV made it easy this year by putting together a guide of their favorite new models and features from all of their fifth wheel brands, Montana, Cougar, Alpine, Arcadia, and Sprinter. Each brand has different floor plans and styling, features, price points, all backed by Keystone's history of innovation, quality, and owner support. The guide is free, and you can get it at KeystoneRV.com. One of the models that was just added to the buying guide is the Montana 3623 EB. Besides unparalleled fifth wheel luxury and comfort, this model has an all new e-bike stow and go storage design. The biggest challenge for RV owners is keeping those bikes safe and charged. Montana designed the strut assisted bike rack system that lets you easily load and store your bikes inside of your coach even has a power supply to keep them charged. Learn more and get your free guide at KeystoneRV.com. Now, the news of the week. And for those of you who like wildflowers in California, this is supposed to be an absolutely spectacular 
uh, bloom this spring. So you're going to want to check out local places, parks, and uh, go see the wildflowers. Now, all that wet weather that California has. Right, all is, that rain. It, it's just amazing. In particular, um, near San Diego is Enzo Borrego State Park, and they have just an incredible bloom of uh, the native primrose there. Uh, and, and what is that woody sunflower sprout that they yeah. all talk about? Just a little north of L.A., the, the vibrant California poppies and other flowers are starting to sprout. And that's in Antelope Valley. In uh, north of L.A. is Antelope Valley. It's a it's a beautiful, it's a, it's a poppy reserve. You ever heard of a poppy reserve? Mm -hmm. Go see it. So those are two, Enzo Borrego down by San Diego and Antelope uh, Valley, uh, north of L.A. So... You're near California, go there. I know once we were in uh, Yellowstone, and I couldn't believe the beautiful little flowers that we saw in, in Yellowstone. Yeah, we did a whole video on them. Yeah, so, yeah. and um, don't miss out on the wildflowers. So this is going to be a great year in many parts of the country. We have a uh, blog post at rvlifestyle.com that lists the 10 uh, best places to see wildflower blooms. And this is something you can do just over the weekend, or if you've got a few days, go take a look at them. Go to rvlifestyle.com. We'll put a link in the show notes uh, to the best spots to see wildflowers uh, at um, rvlifestyle.com slash podcast. Just look in the show notes for this episode. So our next story comes from Florida. And uh, this is a, a major scam. I don't think I've ever heard one quite like this. A group of thieves uh, impersonated a, a legitimate ca uh, Florida business and they set up a fake website and offered to sell motorhomes at really good prices. Now, these motorhomes did not exist. They had fake photos and all this stuff. They sold $80,000 worth of them to people who um, thought they were buying a motorhome, but there was the motorhomes didn't even exist. They impersonated a Panama City uh, business. Uh, they created a fake website. They put the company's logo on it. Uh, they posted motorhomes for sale, just fake. There, there were no motorhomes for sale. And they pretended, they pretended they were the company and they, they set up appointments. They took the money, 80,000 bucks, officials say they got. Um, they uh, do not sell motorhomes. The real company does not sell motorhomes. And they said they, they realized this scam when they started getting phone calls from people saying, hey, I've got an appointment to come see the, the motorhome. Where the heck are you? We want to see it. They even have one guy fly in from California saying he had an appointment. Um, and, and there was no RV and it was a fake appointment. And uh, anyway, um, officials are on the on this thing. But um, just a, a, a reason why you should always look up when you're looking at a used RV, get the VIN number and... Uh, We'll, we have a link uh, in the show notes for this under the news of the week, rvlifestyle.com slash podcast. And you can look up your RVs uh, or any RVs VIN number and learn about it there. Good advice. Well, you know, I think everybody's really excited about this eclipse that we've got coming up. And uh, Texas Parks and Wildlife Department are going to open uh, sales on day passes for the April 8th eclipse at 8 a.m., this Friday, March 8th, uh, much of Texas is in the path of the totality, which passes through the state in a northeast angle, and it crosses the whole country up through Arkansas, Indiana, Ohio, through Maine, and several other states. Yeah, um, it, it's going to be a major event. We've heard from so many people that are going to it, um, and a lot of people are very creative. I know in Indianapolis, which is going to get totality, the... Uh, Indianapolis Motor Speedway, Speedway is opening for day-long um, educational opportunities, and uh, lots of people are going to be camping. Campgrounds have been sold out for months, uh, and this will be the last one for a long time. I don't, I don't yeah, recall. Yeah, at least 20 years, I believe. Yes. I don't remember exactly, but it's a happening. So anyway, if you're going to do that, make sure you know you have proper eye protection and um, don't wait for the last minute to order them because they're also being sold out really quick. Uh, we'll put a link to some of the ones we saw on Amazon that you can get quick delivery if you don't have them yet um, on the uh, notes for the podcast, rvlifestyle.com slash podcast. 
And speaking of Texas, these wildfires that have been burning huge sections of the state, worst ever, uh, make sure you uh, take a look at uh, conditions. Uh, be, if you're heading to Texas, a lot of people on the move as spring break approaches, particularly the Texas Panhandle. Um, the Smokehouse Creek Fire that everybody has been talking about is the largest one the state has ever had. Million acres. Wow. That's just hard to wrap your eyes around. A million acres, uh, lots of structures destroyed, a lot of uh, ranch land is gone. Uh, nobody knows what's happened. It's also burning in Oklahoma. And uh, anyway, if you find yourself near a wildfire area, take precautions. That smoke that can get in your RV as you're driving through can actually do damage to you. I remember we did an interview. Uh, try and avoid it at all costs. All right, that's news of the week. Now it's time for your questions of the week. And we'll get to that right when we return. When we're asked what's the most important modification we made to our RV, it's an easy answer. Battleborne batteries. Battleborne batteries are quality, safe, reliable lithium batteries that allow us to stay out there off the grid longer. Lithium batteries charge faster, they charge fuller, they're longer lasting, they're maintenance free. And Battleborne batteries are protected by a 10 year guarantee. Now in our case, they just dropped into the existing AGM batteries that we have. And they'll probably be the same on your rig too. Battleborne battery experts can get those in your rig just like they did with ours. They can also match you up with the right cabling, the inverter, the charger, the solar controller, everything. Jennifer and I swear by our Battleborne batteries. They allow us to boondock off the grid. Check them out. Go to rvlifestyle.com slash lithium rvlifestyle.com slash lithium. Welcome back. And now it's time for your question of the week. And the question is, is it possible to boondock with AGM batteries? Lithium is way too expensive. And besides, I'd also have to upgrade the wiring and my inverter on my 2012 motorhome and probably get some solar. That is an awful lot of money. I read on an RV forum somewhere that, not yours, that you have to have lithium batteries to boondock. And this is from Brad. Brad, um, I don't know how people boondocked before lithium came out, but believe me, they did. And uh, they did just fine. No, you do not have to have lithium batteries to boondock. I mean, lithium batteries are great. Uh, if possible, we wouldn't have an RV without them because we do like to boondock. We like to be off the grid. And we're and, spoiled. <laughs> and we are spoiled. And lithium batteries allow you to uh, run all your appliances, uh, even um, if you have a big enough system, even your air conditioning, uh, without being plugged in. That said, you don't need them. Many, many people boondock with AGM batteries. They get along all night. Uh, some people bring a small little generator to in, to start stuff. Some have a, like a jackery, a battery generator. Uh, some people don't need any of it. You have a battery-powered lantern for your lights. Um, you stand out by the campfire all night, and when it gets dark and you get tired, you go into the dark RV and use your flashlight to find everything you need, get in bed and sleep, and get up in the morning when it's light. So no, you don't have to have it. You don't have to spend all that money. It is very expensive, as you have probably just uh, just checked out. And an older RV, um, you you usually have to upgrade the wiring. That's a big hassle. Um, so don't worry about it. Uh, you do not have to do that. If you're looking for a new RV and boondocking something you really like, if it's going to be your primary means of camping, you know someday you're going to probably want to get some lithium. Uh, lithium prices are down a little bit, but not nearly as much as I would hope they would as they become adapted by more and more RVers. But um, I don't know where you read that stuff that you have to have lithium to boondock, but you do not. You can do just fine without them. In fact, I'd hazard to guess and say most boondockers don't have lithium or don't have solar. Uh, those are truly luxuries. So get out there. Try boondocking, um, and you'll have a great time, Brad. All right. You got a question? We would love to get your comments or your questions, anything you heard here. Our email address is mikeandjen at rvlifestyle.com. All right. We'll check you next week. I don't know where we'll be. 
but we'll be somewhere testing out these RVs. Happy trails.